Hey everyone, Andrigatz here and today we're delving into 10 to 6 and checking out all 18 possible miles that you can earn. We do have a long way ahead of us, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start. In the latest patch we have the arrival of season 4, the final season of Dragonflight. Yes, indeed, we made it this far and this time we are not getting any new raids or dungeons, instead we'll be revisiting the Dragonflight ones. Let's start off with the Awakened raids, which include the Vault of the Incarnate, Aberus, the Shadow Crucible, and Amir Drasil, the Dream's Hope. The three raids will be on a rotation, with one of them becoming awakened each week, following the weekly reset. Since this is a bonus season, there will be also special raid rewards, and more specifically, completing all three awakened raids on normal or higher during the season earns you the Voyaging Walterling Mount. It appears to be a recolor of the Night Fae mounts that we had in Shadowlands, although it's still a bit different. It had a few changes so far to differentiate it from the Shadowlands ones, but honestly I don't know if that was for the better. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it here and hope for the best. The next mount is actually an old mount, it's not a new one. It was available during Shadowlands Season 4. It's a green slimy cat mount called Jigglesworth Senior, and it's very possible that some of you didn't manage to get it when it was around. Well, now you do have a way to obtain it, and that's from trading three antique bronze bullions to this vendor here in Valdragon. If you are not familiar with this currency, well, in Shadowlands Season Season 4 we got a similar currency called dinars, and in this season we are calling them bullions. Most likely we are going to get them from Mythic Plus or completing raid bosses and possibly from some PvP activity. You can exchange them for raid gear, powerful trinkets, weapons, etc. Speculating that the season 4 will be a short one and most of the gear we obtain will be quickly replaced with greens in the next expansion in the world within, well it's uh, really good cool that Blizzard is also giving us the option to use it for transmogs and of course to buy this lovely mount. In case we didn't get it from Shadowlands. Another coveted mount coming with Season 4 is the new KSM mount, the Infinite Armoredon. It doesn't shy far from its siblings, the previous Dragonfly KSM mounts, but it's personally my favorite among them. To earn this mount, you must achieve a Mythic Plus rating of at least 2000. For dedicated Mythic Plus players, this rating isn't too difficult to attain. However, if you are new to Mythic Plus, you might need to step up your game and focus on pushing keys as much as possible. Being part of a guild or communities can significantly aid your efforts, but if not, you can still try your luck with packs, especially if you play and desire class. Let's hope the dungeon level squeeze will make finding groups easier for everyone. Ok, so moving on, let's see what Season 4 has in store for PvP players. First of all, we get a new vicious mount called Dream Talon. We get it in two variations depending if you are Horde or Alliance. To earn this cool mount, you'll need to fill up your PvP in bar by winning rated matches while holding the combatant rank. This rank requires having 1000 rating or higher. Next up to a more prestigious mount, for achieving Gladiator, the holy grail of PvP arenas, you can unlock the Dragonic Gladiator's Drake. It's not a mount per se, but an exclusive Highland customization. To reach Gladiator requires winning at least 15 games of 3 vs 3 while holding the elite rank, which in turn requires a rating of 2.4k or above. It's no surprise that this mount is one of the most well made out there, given how challenging it is to obtain it. In this patch we also get 9 new mounts coming from Dragonfly meta achievements. These mounts are primarily tied to open world Dragonflight activities, allowing for solo play in most cases. The first mount in this series is the Coral Scale Salamanther, obtained by completing the meta achievement for the Elemental Storms, a task that many find particularly annoying. The difficult part is finding all four types of storms in all four original Dragonite zones. Killing the 200 Empower mobs is pretty easy to do, just kill the ones carrying this buff, avoiding time wasted on others. However, the real challenge lies in tracking down the storms themselves. These storms operate on a schedule active for 2 hours before a 1 hour downtime and then reappearing in a random zone. With 16 storms to find in a rotating cycle, the task can be frustrating and time consuming. 
Unfortunately, recent adjustments have seen two storms active at the same time to aid players in completing this feat. Also, Wowhead is doing a great job showcasing which storm is currently up, so you can keep an eye out there instead of, you know, the game. The other achievements can be done pretty much passively as long as you try and get all these storms. Moving on, for completing the Zara Lake cover meta achievement, you are awarded with the Kelsen Shellwing. Kes Zara Lake Zara Lake is definitely something which takes time if you haven't played at all in the underground zone. The most time consuming is to reach Renown 20 with Lom Niven, but I do have a very good guide doing a deep dive analysis on how to farm all that rep. The rest are pretty easy, taking part in sniff sneaking digs, finding treasures, doing objectives, killing rares, you know, all that uh, outdoor stuff. Up next we have 4 meta achievements, each corresponding to a Dragonite zone. Upon completion of each meta achievement you learn a mount, which we'll delve very shortly. Before we dive in though, there's a crucial tip applicable to all these meta achievements. If you are still missing some of the treasures, focus on collecting expedition bags and disturbed dirt, found scattered throughout the Dragon Isles. These have a low drop chance of yielding a treasure map, which can unlock any treasures you might be missing. Personally, I found the Handy Notes add-on incredibly helpful for marking these treasures on my map, making them easier to locate. Okay, let's break them all down. The first mount, the bestowed Ohuna Spotter, is obtained from the Waking Shores meta achievement known as Wake Me Up. One of the required achievements is to find all legendary NPCs and take them a picture during the cataloging wildlife world quest. These NPCs are only accessible during certain war quests, so your progress will be limited to the number of these quests available each week. It's good to start working on them as early as possible. You'll also need to complete a few climbing war quests, so again start working on them ASAP, because they are time-gated behind those weekly resets and again RNG. Moving on, we have the bestowed Thunderspine Pack Leader, obtained from the Onaran Plains Meta Achievement Center of Attention. To complete this achievement, you'll need to participate in Grand Hunt-related activities. The Grand Hunt event is always ongoing and rotates every two hours across different zones. Firstly, you must complete all three hands in each zone, and fortunately, although these zones are randomized, completing a hand will trigger the next one to appear in a different part of the same zone, so focus on locating the zone you need and then manipulate the hand's location to your advantage. During each hand, be sure to interact with Hemet Nessingwary. As long as the hand is active, our lovely dwarf will be available, just simply chat with him to earn the credit. While participating in the hands, you'll naturally progress towards the other three achievements. For who's a good backer, simply locate all the dogs and interact with them to fulfill the requirements. If you don't see some of them, you might need to do a bit of questing around to unlock them. Next up, completing the Tuscar meta achievement, Army of the Fed, rewards you with the bestowed trolling mammoth. To obtain this mount, you'll need to participate in the community sub event, which occurs every three and a half hours. You also might want to join a group in order to complete it in epic quality. For the secret fishing spots, you only need to craft the three items required to unlock the highlands, lava and ice fishing spots. Taking from nature seems to operate on a weekly rotation, so it's wise to start working on it early. Basically, you'll need to complete a daily quest in different zones, but the fishing points rotate weekly, meaning that the achievement may take up to several weeks to finish. Then you'll have to do a bit of fishing. More specifically, for the achievement we're going to need a bigger harpoon, you'll need to use an ominous conch next to a large lunker sighting, which has the chance to spawn a massive lunker. The large sighting between Waking Shores and Thardrasus is always active and it's often preferred. It's also easier to accomplish this achievement in a group or a raid if you can find that many people. Conches can be obtained from fishing or by looting Tuscar tackle boxes. Then you can use the Scara Harpoon to pull out the massive lunker. You can either purchase it from the auction house or you can craft it from Scara. Mount number 11 on our list is the bestowed Oduk Vanguard, and to earn this one you must complete the Valdragon Accord meta achievement called Flight Club. It's better to start with the time-gated parts of this achievement which are tied to the Valdragon Daycare. If you need more details, I've created a separate video covering everything about the little daycare, so you can check it out after finishing this one. In summary, you'll have to complete quests, normal and daily ones, in this area over here, until you have unlocked all 5 whelplings. For the meta achievement, you also need to complete all the dragon riding races with the whelplings. 
Another event for this meta is the Dragon Bane Keep, in which you need to complete three achievements. This event is always spawning in waking shores every two hours at the top of the hour. I've got two tips for you here. So the first one is for the feeding part, which you can do in multiple events. You don't have to do it in one go. Second, for the tablets achievement, you can just go whenever you want. You don't have to do it when the event is active. You can go anytime to the three designated spots and just interact with the tablets. Then you'll need to complete three achievements in the Obsidian Citadel by farming keys. First, complete the war quest that introduces you to the process. Essentially, you need to combine three key framings and 30 key fragments to create an obsidian key, which you can then turn into one of four individuals. That's Rathion, Sabillian, Forge Master Bezentus, and Iggy's the Believer. You'll also notice a progress bar above each NPC, which when full spawns a rare event. Completing all four rare events is also one of the requirements for the meta. Luckily, the progress is server-wide, so you don't have to do it alone. For the Obsidian Keymaster achievement, you'll also need to do a lot of grinding here to obtain all keys. You'll want to save them up and turn them into either Rathion or Sabillian because they are one of the requirements for the Taiwan meta achievement, which we'll discuss in a bit. Moving on to mount number 12, we have this Skitterfly called Bestow Sun Skimmer. To obtain this mount, you'll need to complete the meta achievement closing time. First, you'll need to defeat the Primalist bosses in Storm's Fury. This event is actually up for 4 hours and then it's inactive for 1 hour. To get to the event, you always need to go through the portal here in Thaldrassus. During the event, your objective is to close down 4 portals marked on the map by defending them, after which a final boss will spawn. The next requirement is clearing the Dawn of the Infinite Mega Dungeon. This is relatively easy and it doesn't matter which difficulty you clear it on. The remaining achievements are obtained from Time Rifts. This event is active for approximately 10 minutes and starts every hour on the hour. For 9 minutes, you'll need to complete different tasks for Sorry Dormy, and then you'll enter a portal to defeat the final boss. Mount number 13 is Storm Touch Brafalon. To obtain this mount, you'll need to complete the meta achievement of the Dragon Isles. If you've already completed everything we covered so far, you'll have a head start. Six of these achievements are what we have discussed previously, and the last three are relatively easy. First of all, you need to defeat the final boss of the Researchers Under Fire event, which occurs at the half point of the hour in Zaralik Cover. Next, you need to complete a Suffusion Cap war quest, which is pretty easy to do. Thuraka Souls can be found in either on Naron Plains or Azure Span. For the Dream Shaper, you simply need to find the Dream Search event indicated by a green mark on your map and just complete the quest shaping the Dream Search. This quest involves flying around, completing war quests, collecting green orbs, and defeating empowered mobs. Completing this meta achievement will earn you the Brafalon Mount. Finally, for completing the mega meta achievement A World Awaken, which part of it we already went over, you can get the good boy Taivan. This achievement is the pinnacle of meta achievements, encompassing over 100 individual achievements, but if you play since Dragonfly's launch, well, you're probably more than halfway there. Now it's just a matter of patching up any holes. So let's break it down. First, complete all three raids. Vault of Incarnate, Aberus, and Amidrasil on LFR or higher. Then complete all Dragonfly dungeons on Mythic, you also need to do all the main campaign quests and side quest lines of each zone. The Friend of the Dragon Isles requires completing six side quest lines, which are unlocked upon reaching certain renowned levels with each faction. For Dragon Quest, you need to complete certain quest lines again throughout the Dragon Isles, and one of them is the Fringe Benefits, which entails completing eight daily quests in the Everywhere Inn. While easy, it's still time gated, so start early. The specific meta achievement is either very good or really bad, especially if starting from scratch. It involves reaching maximum renown with each faction in the Dragon Isles, including main and side factions. For instance, reaching maximum friendship with Rathion and Sabillian in the Obsidian Citadel can be achieved by turning in keys. Cobalt Assembly reputation is earned by farming mobs in the Cobalt Assembly area in Azure Span. Winter Pearl Furbox have a unique method of obtaining reputation. I mean, it's not really hard, you only need to invest like 1-2 hours of farming. 
And then we have the Lomnifen and Dream Wardens, which have a ton of ways to earn reputation. I've got some deep dive guides on to how to max this out, so if you want, you can check those videos. You also need to grind reputation with Sorry Dormi from Time Rifts. One way to do that is the weekly quest and just keep farming Time Rifts, or you can try farming the first boss of the dawn, reset the instance and go again. The bosses here give a good amount of reputation and that's what I found to be the most efficient solo way, but obviously you do need to have a good gear. Lastly, Artisan Consortium can be maxed out by completing profession weekly quests. The in Dragon Isles Pathfinder entails completing all main storylines, exploring the latest two zones and delving into the Zara Lake Cavern story, making it relatively easy. However, when it comes to the Forbidden Reach meta achievement, things get a bit trickier, but I've got some tips for you. For the Hoarder achievement, there are two key things to remember. First, consider purchasing the Rolling Quarry Scroll of Perception from the Cataloger NPC on Morkid Island. This handy item marks small treasures on your minimap, making them easy to locate. Second, consider turning war mode on, especially if you are in a highly populated realm. It seems there's just too much competition right now in war mode off. Another requirement is taking down all the rares in the Forbidden Reach. Some of these rares require specific profession items to be summoned, called Artisan Curios. Obviously not everyone has all professions, so what you can do instead is buy the curious from the auction house and summon the rares yourself. For the scroll hunter achievement you'll need to find scrolls that mark treasures on your map. You can get the scrolls by looting treasures, but the most efficient way is by killing guards. There's a good hyperspawn spot right in this area. Start farming here and be sure to have plenty of Azure Scrying Crystals on hand. You can buy this from the Morkid Island with 2k overflow and they increase your chance of finding these scrolls. Once you do a bit of farming and find all 50 scrolls, you can just use them and fly to the marked spots and loot the treasures. Additionally, you'll also need to complete the Emerald Dreams meta achievement Dream On. While it's fairly easy compared to all the others, I do want to highlight one aspect. For completing the I Dream of Seeds achievement, use any type of seed and plant it in specific location, depending on which ones you are missing. Each bounty has a designated spot that grows into a specific plant, so don't waste your time flying around randomly. The locations are predetermined, so find the one you're missing and head there and plant the seed. Finally, before acquiring the good boy, you'll need to complete the Dragon Riding meta achievement. This is actually a very easy one to do, it just involves locating all dragon glyphs in the dragonfly zones and completing the races in bronze. After all that grind of frustration, you'll finally obtain the magnificent mount. While it may be one of the most time-consuming mounts to obtain, it's definitely so much worth it and, you know, you can do that until the war within. In a similar manner, you can also work your way through Shadowlands and complete the Shadowlands meta achievement back from the beyond. This will award you with a very unique dragon called Zovaz Shade Beast Color. It's basically the same model as Gladiator mounts from Shadowlands, so again it's very, very unique. But same as Taiwan, it's also very time consuming. If you are thinking to start working on it, I would advise you to start with the Covenant Sanctums, as they seem to take the most time, and specifically Necrolord's Stitchyard and Nightface Merasmus will take a good chunk of your time. This is where I'm currently working on, and yeah, reaching Merasmus' reputation to Exalted, uh, it does take around a month worth of dailies. The last three months that I left for the end are all obtained from Plunderstorm. The new Battle Royale game based in Nazareth is where you can find this lovely mount. The TLDR is you collect plunder from killing mobs or players, looting treasures, completing objectives and so on. This plunder that you obtain equals 1 to 1 ratio with the Kex Lex Crew Renown track in WoW. The more renown you collect, the more rewards you'll get, including these three mounts. Keep in mind that Plunderstorm is only active until April 30th, so you only have a few weeks left to grab all the rewards. Luckily for us, Blizzard has doubled the plunder we get from all sources until the event ends, so now is the best time to finish your grind. Ok, so with that out of the way, let's have a look at the three mounts. First one is the Silver Tide Stallion, an underground mount that unlocks at Renown 10. Moving forward, reaching Renown 20 grants you the regular Flying Parrot, the Royal Sea Feather, and lastly, for reaching Renown 39, you obtain a new dragon riding mount, the Poly Roger. It's no regular parrot though, this one is rocking a parrot's hat, so it's really, really unique. 
And there you have it, 17 new mounts to obtain in patch 10 to 6 with one old one making a comeback. I hope you enjoyed this video, if yes then please give it a big thumbs up and comment your favorite mount of the list. As always thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. Good luck with whatever you are doing and I will see you all on the next one, bye!